going up through the uh, Chafalaya Delta country and uh, we're coming in from the south so we're going to see the Morganza Spillway first and then we'll go further north and see the Old River Control Structure. That's the two components that involve the Mississippi River and the Atchafalaya River. The Old River Control Structure that allow 30% uh, of the flow of the Mississippi River through those structures down the channel, they meet up with the Red River, and that becomes the Atchafalaya River. So it's 30% of the flow of the Mississippi River at all times, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The Morganza Spillway is an emergency uh, structure that they open up during uh, extreme flood and extreme high river levels to take pressure off of the Mississippi River, and they dump additional water into the Atchafalaya River over and above the 30% flow. So then the Atchafalaya River really swells in its size. And if Mother Nature had its choice, it would uh, just change the uh, riverbed from the Mississippi River, would switch and become the Atchafalaya River. Uh, the gradient for the Atchafalaya is uh, 100 miles shorter than the gradient uh, for the Mississippi River. This meandering riverbed. So the power of nature uh, versus the Corps engineers, who wins? I've been here for 50 years. And, uh, we've been here since just after Hurricane Betsy. We were her, here when Hurricane Camille uh, tore up the Mississippi coast. Uh, I was here when Katrina came through New Orleans, went over, took my little boat over to New Orleans uh, to help in some of the rescue. the city park area. Uh, I swam the river when I was 19 uh, below New Orleans, me and a buddy of mine. Uh, I've walked across the Atchafalaya Basin a couple times. That's a 24 mile hike with some water portages. I canoed uh, solo 350 miles from Arkansas down to Beulah Road south of I-10. I've been hunting and fishing here for 50 years. So a lot of my life is wrapped up in this uh, South Louisiana environment. And right now, uh, the, the big news is the fact that they're considering uh, the likelihood that they have to open the Morganza Spillway, which basically will relieve the pressure from the Mississippi River, uh, take that water into the Atchafalaya River, and send it south. Reduce speed to 45 miles an hour. Do not stop. All right. Well, I'm fixing to get a little peek at the business end of the Morganza Spillway. Train on the track. Oh, holy cow. Woo! Man, oh man, oh man. Now this is... Mississippi River flood water. It's just right up to the edge here. And that's the Mississippi River is a few miles off to our east to our right. My, my, my. Goodness gracious. So off to the left, it's dry over there right now. dry for the moment, but when they open the spillway, that's going to get inundated in a hurry. And so all the critters are going to have to come running out of there. Snakes, and deer, all the varmints, bear. <laughs> So we're over the spillway now. The bay doors are underneath us. You can see the flood water out there. And this whole area here, that whole, that whole area there, that green area, is what will be flooded in the next few days.
So this is the Mississippi River right here. <laughs> Mississippi here. My goodness. Extends way out. Way out. We see the river is very wide here. So the Mississippi River is a few miles over to the east, and that's the Organza Spillway. Quite soon they'll be opening the bays. And then uh, there's gonna be a lot of water moving through there. It's almost like those pelicans know it and they're just waiting. Here's the west side of the spillway that uh, is the channel basically that takes the water to the Chaffalai River. The Chaffalai River is a few miles due west of here. So this whole area is going to be underwater in the next few days. So you see like a lot of this this uh, basically study these limestone rocks. This is the riprap. <laughs> this is the best we could do for rocks in Louisiana. Unintended consequences, letting the Asian carp get loose in the Mississippi River system. We're ruining the environment down here. Unintended consequences of building the channelizing the Mississippi River. slider. That is one big old slider. There's a leech on it. Look at that leech. Look at that, Look at that leech right there. That's a big old leech. See the leech? That. Ten pounds. That's <laughs> a big animal. Beautiful. Alright. We'll see you. See you later. See you later with your leech. <sighs> There's a good look at the hard flowing river. And these camps aren't too high above it right now, so if it comes up a few feet, these camps could be in trouble. So we've been up north on Highway 90, Crot Springs took a tour up to the Morganza Spillway and the old river control structure. And then we eased on down south and now we're on I-10 heading west, fixing to cross the Achapfly River. And uh, we'll get another look at it a little further south than where we were earlier. Let's see if it looks like it's ripped along. And yes, it does. Unintended consequences. You channelize a big river. The next thing you know, you're losing shoreline due to compaction, subsidence, and erosion. The river's trying to change course, affecting commercial and private interests. Unintended
unintended consequences of letting Asian carp go into a river system and ruining the ecology of the river system. Unintended consequences, letting a snake go in southern Florida. It got too big for you to take care of. Unintended consequences of bringing home a pretty water plant and putting it in your outdoor pond. A lot of things we do that have a lot of impact that we don't anticipate. 